So don't be too concerned if your abs don't show, if you know what I mean. So in this video, I'm taking you through my core routine, which is designed to build functional, stable muscle for long days in the mountains. Whether you're a hiker, rock climber, mountaineer, these exercises are gonna help you. You can do this just about every day. This is a low intensity, high frequency routine. And the focus here is on quality rather than quantity. So we're gonna be going for time. If you need to take a break and jump back in at any time, please do. Let's get into it. So our first movement is both core activation and an anti-rotation drill. So begin in a high plank push-up position with your feet spread wide, maybe a meter or two to three feet apart. And before you start moving, really solidify this position by locking out your knees and your hips, tucking your ribs and squeezing your butt so we solidify that whole plank position. Initiate the movement by slowly bringing one hand off the ground and placing it on the opposite shoulder and immediately you'll feel some rotation in your hips. From here, consider that rotation the enemy. You want to eliminate it, and the only way to do that is by focusing more and more on engaging your muscles. And as you improve in this movement, you can start to bring your feet closer and closer together, and that will inevitably make the rotating harder to avoid. Our next movement is the supported pike leg lift. So begin in this partial L-sit position with your back as straight as possible throughout the movement. One leg should be out straight and the other one tucked in closely to your chest. Begin by lifting your foot off the ground with your knee perfectly straight, pointing the toes away to help firm up all the musculature in the leg. This can be really difficult at first um, for many people and if that's the case, I'd highly recommend taking a step back and working on some hip flexor activation drills, which we do in my elements program. And I'll talk about that a little later. But for now, just focus on keeping your back as straight as possible throughout this movement and just do your best to lift your leg as high as you can, even if it's a millimeter off the ground. This is all about creating that tension and firming up the entire leg starting from the hip. All right, now we'll switch to the other side for the supported pike leg lift. If you like, you can progress this movement by just placing the other leg flat on the ground. You don't need to have the knee supported up near your chest. That's gonna make things a little more difficult. Now at this stage, you might be wondering whether that cramp you're feeling in your quads really counts as building core strength. Well, I like to think of core as any muscle that originates or inserts into the pelvic girdle. The pelvis is basically our center of gravity and it's where we derive a lot of our stability and balance. And by the way, if you are cramping a little, just take it easy and do your best. You will build strength over time. Our next move is one of my favorites. This is the dead bug. So begin lying on your back with your hands above your shoulders and your knees directly above your hips. Before you begin, make sure your lower back is pressed firmly into the mat, or in my case, the concrete. And if it isn't, rotate your pelvis into posterior pelvic tilt until you feel your lower back in contact with the mat. The aim of this movement is to extend your limbs while keeping your ribs from flaring upwards and losing that lower back contact. Perform this for one minute, and if you can't continue for one minute without sacrificing the form, then take a short rest and begin again when you're ready. Same goes for all of these movements in this core drill. Never sacrifice form simply to do the designated time or reps, especially when it comes to core strength. That would defeat the purpose, which is to build control. For our next move, we're just gonna be sitting up on your butt, and this is a kayaker, which is a pretty standard core move, but I'm gonna show you a little variation on this. 
Now you can grab something you can use as a weight, but here I'm just doing a body weight version. If you're using a weight, try not to bang the weight on the floor. Other than the sounds of your breathing and this velvety jazzy banger, you should not be hearing anything. Your aim here is to perform slow controlled rotations whilst maintaining that core integrity. So it's really important to sit up on your hips, keep your chest out and shoulders back, and the key is to squeeze your knees and your feet together as much as you can for the whole movement. This provides some extra contraction through the adductors, the insides of your thighs, and this makes the move a lot more effective and more challenging. Our next move is a scapular push-up. So you're gonna begin on the elbow plank position, but rather than being in a standard elbow plank, what you're gonna do is protract your shoulder blades, meaning that we make a really nice round upper back between the shoulders. From here, we wanna sink down into the shoulder blades, so we retract the shoulder blades and you're pushing your chest towards the ground. You'll notice that this demands a lot of activation through the mid to upper back. So obviously rhomboids are working here, but mainly we're working the serratus anterior, which is one of those really important deep core muscles. Also here, I want you to rotate your pelvis into a posterior pelvic tilt and lock your knees out and really solidify everything from your toes through to your forearms, press into the ground and create that tension here. Coming up next, we've got the steam engine. So you're gonna be lying on your back. And for this movement, we're really gonna focus on that feeling of compression you get as you bring your elbow across your body to the opposite knee or as close as you can. Now, if any time throughout this movement, your lower back arches and you lose that contact with the floor, I encourage you to stop, to take a rest and a breather and come back in when you're ready. You should have your hands placed gently behind your ears here trying to lift your shoulders off the ground using your core strength. Physically pulling on your head and neck is not advisable. <laughs> You're not gonna do yourself any good. And it's probably led to this exercise getting a really bad rap in the fitness industry, which I don't think it deserves. It's a good movement as long as it's performed slowly and under control. Okay, our final move in this little core drill is the windscreen wiper. So lay on your back, spread your arms wide at about shoulder height, palms facing down, and fingers gripping the ground for support. Bring your legs up above your hips and slowly lower to one side. And when you do this, attempt to keep your quads engaged and squeeze your feet and knees together so we get those adductors, inner thighs working as well. The primary focus here should be maintaining contact with the ground through the arms and shoulders. So you should only go as low as you can whilst maintaining that contact with the ground. When your shoulders lose contact with the floor like mine just did, it's an indication that you've perhaps gone too far. So really slow it down and keep it under control. So a couple of things with this core routine, you can do it three, four, maybe five times a week. I don't think there's such thing as too much core. You could do this as an activation workout before you do your training. You could do it as a cool down after a strength workout or a run. You can fit it in wherever you like because it's only 10 minutes. I would say really focus on quality here rather than quantity. Don't be too concerned about how long or how many reps you're doing with the exercises. Just really focus on getting as much engagement as you can for that given time. And if you need to, you can maybe expand this out to a minute, but 45 seconds is probably enough. Seven minute abs. When it comes to core strength, I would say, don't be concerned about the way you look. Just because you don't have visible abs doesn't mean you're not strong in the core. And if your end goal is functionality, stability, and endurance, then it really doesn't matter if your abdominals are covered by a little bit of fat. I know mine certainly are. 
I mean, if your goal is to have a ripped 12 pack, then power to you, go for it. But it's not going to necessarily help you in the mountains. And in fact, it might actually hinder you. If you're gonna go and spend a month in the Himalayas, or if you're gonna do a long distance hike, then you're probably gonna need some body fat. So don't be too concerned if your abs don't show, if you know what I mean. I think that image has been just pushed in front of us all the time, and it's not necessarily a healthy one although it really depends what your goals are. Final point about this core workout is don't cut corners. If you can't do one of these exercises for some reason, then you need a regression. We need to find an easier exercise. So that is what my elements program is for. We go back to basics, building deep core activation from square one. So if you haven't seen my elements program, you can check out the video here. But I would also encourage you to check out my hollow video. I think hollows are basically the standard testing procedure for building real functional core strength and you can check that out in this video guys that's all for this one i'll see you on the summit